G'day guys, you're back with Miracle Max. Today in the workshop we have a Volkswagen Amarok 2 litre diesel 2013 model. Now I did a service on it the other day and I found a few fault codes that I'm going to investigate further. What are they? Let's check them out together. Last week when the customer bought their vehicle in I hooked up the scan tool and it came up with these three codes. Over here we have a P161B glow plug for cylinder number two. Uh, the second one there is a P261A coolant pump, EGR coolant pump, secondary auxiliary pump that is. And then the third one over here is a P1601 relay for supply voltage uh, which is the J317 uh, relay there. So even though this coolant one hasn't come back as yet, um, it has been a problem for some time. Um, this is probably the third service that I've done where I've noted it. The customer hasn't wanted to look at it originally, but now after three times, I'm suggesting that he really gets it done. Can cause overheating, etc. It's an auxiliary coolant pump, uh, sometimes called an EGR coolant pump as well. So we need to look at that too. So let's have a look at the scan tool now. Let's see if there's any actuations we can do on it. I'm going to go to my EGR cooler pump over here and we're going to have a listen to it. We'll select it and we'll start it and have a listen to what it does. The pump is that fella just down there and you can clearly hear that it's quite noisy. So I suggest that it's not necessarily a broken issue. Clearly the wiring is okay. Clearly it's operating, but it's certainly noisy, isn't it? So it's probably worn. It's a fairly common fault for them. Um, so I've told the customer that it needs a replacement. These can cause overheating if they're not operating correctly. So it's something that should be addressed. The pump in this case is sort of bolted to the front of the engine. You can't really see it. It's right down here, but uh, I'll clear this stuff out the road just to make it easier for you guys to see. So I'll pull off my intake ducting down here, take that all off around there onto my turbo and uh, this looks like the PVC system. I might just try and undo that to give better access to the pump which is just below that. Ah, your history. Um, you can see this sort of knurled section here. There's another one down the bottom here. So all we do is we squish down here and give a bit of wiggle, wiggle, wiggle and that should pop off. That's my theory. Other one came off fairly easy. This one, of course, because it's in front of the camera, decides not to, but it should come off. Come on. There we go. No, not quite. Just a little bit more. There we go. Popped off. Just be aware that there's an O-ring on there that you don't want to damage. Electrical pump, as you can see, there's a, a uh, connector down there, thick wires. So obviously it has a fair bit of current draw. Just a couple of coolant hoses that go on there. Nothing exciting. Um, just a pump, an auxiliary pump, but I think they're bolted onto the side of the engine so I'll need to gain access from down here somewhere. Pulling this particular clamp off was a pain in the bot bot, but I eventually got it off. They're a weird design. I don't have the official tool, but I got it off with a pair of multi-grips. They seem to work eventually. Now I've also pulled off my coolant tank uh, cap and then put it back on and I was able to pull this hose off. So we don't have any more leakage coming out there. I've got this fella down here to get off. Now that's gonna be a bit of a pain. Um, and of course, once we get this fella out the road, there's an electrical connector right here that needs to be undone. So you just push down on that little fella there and then that connector should come out like a DOS. No problem, eh? Okay, so you know how I said I was struggling with that clamp down here. Um, I thought, well, I'll just move this heat shieldy type thing back. And it's actually held from the back, the bracket that's held there. So you've got to slide this fella backwards over the connector. So you've got to lift that up over the connector and push the whole heat shield back. I don't know how successful I'll be, but that's the design. You flip it over there, then you push it backwards. Then hopefully you can access the bolts on the back. Look, I'm a bit of a putz. I've made a mistake here, guys. I should have looked more carefully. I assumed incorrectly that there would be a couple of bolts going onto the engine this way. Didn't even think to look this way. If I grab a mirror and have a look down there I might be able to show you. See that big bolt? There you go. See that big bolt? Looks like there's only a single bolt holding it in place. So yay, stupid me. 
but it uh, looks like that whole bracket should come off now and I can do it on the bench. It is so much easier when you have a decent look, you clown. Don't make the same mistake I did. It's held in place by a locating pin as well as a single bolt. And of course that little uh, heat um, assembly, that just slides back. You fit your new one, job's done, bolted in place. If you're interested, this is a Torx bit and it is a size 12 Torx bit. Fits in there, comes out in five seconds, as long as you have a look. Like I said, I didn't realize that it came from the front. I assumed that it came from the side, couldn't see anything. What a clown. So don't make the same mistake I did, guys. So now I can assemble this while it's out and then plonk it back into place. If you're curious, there's the new pump. I'm using a Goss pump, not a sponsor, of course. Uh, there's the Goss pump and there is our part number. It's an AP100 in this particular case. Volkswagen did have trouble with these particular pumps uh, ending in A and then they upgraded them, I believe, to a, a figure that came on the end with an F. I don't know what they've done with the aftermarket, but hopefully that's better than the original. Another thing I'm going to do is get rid of these stupid clamps. What a pain in the butt. I'm sure if you had the special tool it wouldn't be too hard, but I'm going to replace it with a normal worm drive style. I've got some of those in stock. It's going to be a lot easier to put back on in the end. Another thing too, it's not a bad idea to keep these little caps that were covering the uh, ports. These are good for all sorts of things. Uh, I've got a whole collection of them. So keep any of these caps that you find from different products or different components that you fit to vehicles. So I've now changed over those rubber bushes, doovies, whatever you want to call them, just to show you what I've found with the old one. That's this bloke here. I've fitted the new one with its uh, heat shielding and bracket and all that sort of stuff. Honestly, it didn't take long. I'm such a clown for not looking uh, to see from this end where there was just a single bolt that holds it in place. Not a big job. Once you get the hose clamps off and that connector, of course, not really hard. But I'll pick this up and have a listen. Okay. <laughs> dead quiet on the new one. Obviously the pump itself, the vein, I assume it's a vein style pump, something along those lines. I might even pull it apart later on to have a look, but you can, uh, you can clearly hear that it's uh, fallen apart inside or worn out. And of course that's going to put extra strain on the motor, more current draw on the motor, and therefore the ECU will pick up that fault. But yeah, <laughs> she's pretty noisy, hey? <laughs> so like I said, I might flip this off later on and just have a little bow peep, see what it's like inside. At the front of the motor, as I said before, there is your bolt hole and there's the locating hole there. So not that hard to do, just with your T12 uh, Torx bit that goes in the front, tighten them up, job's done. So I've pressure tested my cooling system and it's holding nicely, there's no drop. Uh, I've added a bit of distilled water and um, let's have a look and see if there's any leaks. So there's no leak at the top hose there and if we sneak down the bottom there there's no leak from that bottom hose either. I wonder what it sounds like now if we activate it with a G-Scan. Right, let's wait and have a listen. I've got to activate it with the G-Scan. So let's wait and listen. Well, even though it's got a bit of noise attached to it, of course it's an electric motor, it certainly doesn't have that rattling noise that the other one had. So yeah, I'm happy with that. That sounds good. Man, that took a while to get apart. I had to grind all the plastic off the side. Obviously that's part of uh, what, this housing here, I guess. Um, but uh, this is our pump assembly, our impeller. And as I showed you, check it out, the amount of wear in there. It's just flopping around like an old sock, eh? Uh, that was the noise that it was making. So it was a good call. And of course the main problem was the impeller. Check this out. Like <laughs> a lot of wear in there, isn't there? So that was the main fault, the impeller, not necessarily the motor. The motor seemed to be activating okay, but this noise was coming from this impeller, this worn impeller. So it was a good call. Um, all I've got to do is road test it now. So road test completed, no overheating issues. I've double checked my coolant level and that's okay. And I'm happy that the customer can come and pick it up now. I hope you enjoyed this video today, guys. I did almost screw it up, didn't I? I can't emphasize enough having a good visual before you start a job. I looked everywhere to see the process involved, um, looked on YouTube, etc. couldn't find anything for this particular vehicle. So it was a learning lesson for me as well. I can put that in the old gray box and now I know for next time. I hope you did get something from this video today, guys. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel give it a like and feel free to comment down below. Don't forget about that notification bell. You don't want to miss any future videos. 
So guys, until next time, this is Miracle Max signing off. I will catch you later.